10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... Ladies and gentlemen, live on CompetitionPlus.com. It is the Competition Plus Power Hour. I'm Lee Kraft, a.k.a. the Monday Morning Racer, coming to you live somewhere in the state of Indiana from an undisclosed motel on the road. And next to me is Mr. Darren Williams, Jr., a.k.a. the man, the myth, the assistant editor for CompetitionPlus.com. Yeah, sometimes when you're reading on the place that you can... Well, believe what you read on the internet. That man wrote it. Darren, how's it going? James Roger Lee Kraft. How's it going, my man? And like you said, you know, make uh, look forward to a, a cool Cordova recap, Funny Car Chaos in Cordova this past weekend recap written by yours truly. That should be coming up maybe within the next couple of days or so, but watch out for that. But what All a right. weekend of drag racing we saw, man. Like you man, said, got Funny Car Chaos in Cordova. And the NHRA Heritage Series, Look, great weekend great of racing. Great weekend of drag racing. You do not have to have an NHRA national event to have a great weekend of drag racing. Now, certainly, I'm looking forward to the Summit NHRA Nationals at Norwalk Summit Motorsports Park this weekend. But nonetheless, I don't have to have a national event to enjoy me some good old drag racing. There are great cars, races, series out there beyond NHRA national event level. And I'm excited to talk about that. And then certainly with our guests tonight, which happen to be big players on the national scene, such as Bill Bader Jr. himself, the ringleader out there at Summit Motorsports Park in Norwalk, Ohio. And then let's not call it a comeback because she never left, Miss Erica Enders. She will be on, and we'll be chatting with her about all things in her jam, which is Pro Stock and that win of the NHRA Valley, NHRA Thunder Valley Nationals. That's an all-star lineup right there. You talk about Bill Bader, you know, Summit Motorsports yeah. Park, America's Racetrack, and you got America's the racetrack. I love America's how they go racetrack. out there. And they're like, America's Racetrack. Like, America's G-Mac Racetrack. might be able to say the Bellagio, and other places might be able to say the most historic or whatever, but they're like, we're America's. Yeah. Yes. And then you got the and you got the five time champ, not five time, five time. Where's the camera at? Five time yes. champ, five. Eric Enders, first five. one of the season a couple of weeks in Bristol. And like you said, don't call it a comeback because she didn't go nowhere. We're kind of no. wondering, you know, a little bit of a slow start, only two round wins through the first few races of the season. But she goes four in Bristol. And like I said, she's back. And uh, I think she's uh, she just let the competition get a little bit of a head start, but she's ready to reel them back in now as we go forward here in 2023. That's right. That's right. Hey, Folks out there, we see you in the comment section. Dive into that comment section. Let us know where you are watching from. Hey, did you watch Funny Car Chaos, Cordova Dragway, Summer Nationals on Flow Racing? Or did you happen to watch the NHRA Wally Parks Nostalgia Nationals there at Beach Bend Raceway on the YouTube channel? Thank you, NHRA, for providing that that content on uh the youtube channel and uh, oh by the way there's a couple of live streams where you can find somebody (laughs) somebody on those nhra live streams as well hey i'll tell you what so flow racing does a great job covering funny car chaos nitro chaos and everything like that i like how they they sprinkle in you know people tweet and they show those tweets up on the broadcast now i like that little touch and that they do now and well well, jerry let me stop you let me stop Mm -hmm. you right now so, so that everybody knows, let me, let me, let me, let me help a brother out. And when I mean help a brother out, Mr. Warren Evans. Yeah. Behind the scenes, he is not a flow employee. You see how all that works out is it is a funny car chaos production that is sent to flow. So I think personally, the best flow stream out there. Mr. Warren Evans is on the ones and the twos and banging it out and stepping the game up. Just like you said, with that social media feed, different camera angles. And I do like to thank the best starting line cameraman in the whole nation. Oh, yeah. You're the best, man. You're the man. You're the man. And and shout out to Warren Evans because that's the only reason I'm able to watch flow racing anyway. So, but we can move on. on. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Drag Racing Central, uh, he mentions that, yes, the PDRA, they were at Maryland International Raceway. 
fine facility that has spectacular events all through the year. They had another great race as well. Great competition. Great competition there at Maryland International Raceway. Yeah, and for sure. And just going back to the NHRA Heritage Series, you know, like I talked about the stream for Funny Car Chaos, NHRA, shout out to them for actually posting it on the NHRA YouTube channel. And what a great feat it was as well. I mean, great weekend of, great weekend of action, excuse me, full of nitro racing. We have Fuel Altered, Nitro Funny Car, Top Fuel Dragster, and a lot of sportsman action as well. The only critique I would have of the stream, and I know this is probably just due to not as many cameras on the property, but um, they had a starting line cam, and they had a cam, I guess, somewhere on the tower we could see down track. Uh, they show the starting line cam for the burnouts. I wish they would have showed the starting line cam when the cars would take off more and then cut to the camera up top to when they go down track. But all in all, a great stream. And shout out to NHRA for putting on a great event and, and broadcasting it to all of us right. here at home because it was a great show. And I'm ready to break it down, man, because it was awesome. Good, good. Well, to give you some insight even there and for everyone watching, what that kit is, interestingly enough, uh, Warren Evans was behind the design of it. And it's designed for all these divisions when they do have their divisionals, double divisionals and regionals for them to be streamed to YouTube and have some streaming capability. It is literally a big box, like, you know, a plastic toolbox that has got everything in it. And it's just a two camera setup. It's basically mm -hmm. get the show out there mm -hmm. and be able to have a stream. Let me say this. If you want more out of what you're seeing, and I think double divisionals and regionals especially are worth it, and also something like the uh, Huawei Parks NHRA Nostalgia Nationals is definitely worth it, then uh, send something to NHRA, an email, and say, hey, we want more camera angles. Mm -hmm. Invest in that. Find a sponsor. Work it out. They're out there. I'm sure mm -hmm. someone would step up. And uh, maybe they need a pit reporter, too. And you know who's on property, too? And you can see full, I'm sure, top field eliminations coming up soon. Nitro America, Les Mayhew was on, on the property. I he, was on the property. he was on <laughs> yes. property. He was yeah. on property. He was on property. I got to talk with Les a little bit on Thursday uh, over there in the uh, Tyler Hilton pit, and uh, he was very generous. He's like, ah, oh, the most recognizable face in all of NHRA media. <laughs> <laughs> ah, whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. <laughs> whatever. But uh, Les uh, does a spectacular job when he gets a video out. They are done phenomenally well. And, uh, yes, that work. Uh, whenever we do get to see it will be spectacular so man look i was there thursday beach bin raceway first time i'd ever seen it i had heard about it it is iconic you know when a race is happening at beach bin because of the covered grandstands reminds me of old darlington raceway i didn't know it no one had really mentioned it or i just had never paid attention but the spectator side grandstand the larger one not the pit side it's very neat, man. It's all old stadium seating from an old ballpark. And the old ballpark for that particular minor league team in Bowling Green is known as the Hot Rods. I mean, how fitting is that from an That's old cool. ballpark called the Hot Rods in now this uh, great uh, step back in time type of venue. And you've got these stadiums uh, seating still being used and uh carrying the bums of spectators <laughs> it is a neat facility you go you you feel like you're well you, you literally go to the end of the road up and over the hills to the end of the road past the bowling green not bowling green country club and there you can see the wooden roller coaster off in the distance of the theme park and uh, the beautiful grass of kentucky and it sits down off the hill and you can overlook this strip of asphalt where so many have ripped down it in the, well, the sheer enjoyment of competition to win a trophy, whatever that trophy may be. And what a great facility to host this very type of event. It's got that throwback feel. And this definitely was a throwback facility. Now, Darren, I saw every heavy, heavy hitter, except you consider one possibly in Funny Car. Funny Car was a spectacular field for that Wally Parks NHRA Nostalgia Nationals. Oh, for sure. And, and starting off, obviously, you got the five-time champ. We talk about the five-time champ for Pro Stock. We have the five-time champ in NHRA Heritage Series Funny Car Racing, Bobby Cottrell driving for the legend, Bucky Austin. You got Billy Morris in the Problem Child Nitro Funny Car, Jeff Moniz, quarter pounder. And the guy who's really come on the scene this year, come on strong, 
is Kamaka Pocock and the California Hustler getting the job done, bringing on Mark Lee uh, um, over on uh, on the scene here this year as crew chief. So uh, they've really stepped up their program. And I feel like, as we all know, Bobby Cottrell got the win, second win of the year, won the Marshall Meet to kick off the year, and then wins here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And you add on the Legends Nitro Funny Car win he got in Bristol. That team was on a roll right now. But the story of the weekend had to be Bobby Cottrell versus Kamaka Pocock. Kamaka Pocock was number one qualifier after the first session with a great 570 elapsed time. Well, Bobby took it back in Q2, was the only guy to dip into the 60s. Going into Q3, Kamaka Pocock was up first, could not take the number one spot back, and Bobby Cottrell actually pulled out a line after that. And the reason was is because they thought that Kamaka Pocock was the only guy who could take the number one qualifying spot away from them. The, I mean, just a sheer just show of just like – a great show of respect to that team to say, hey, you're the only team that can take this away. So, hey, they pulled out a line and then they went back and forth in eliminations. Both teams laid down great passes throughout the first two rounds and then ultimately led to them meeting in the final round. And what a great final round it was. Kamaka Pocock went in and deep staged on Bobby Cottrell. Bobby Cottrell took a chunk out of the starting line as well, but a 008 reaction time from Cottrell in the final round. He gets the win, goes back to back, not only not only on the season, but goes back to back in Bowling Green as well. Funny car was off the hook this weekend at Beach Bend Raceway Park. I want to ask this, though, Darren, and no disrespect to the the team behind Bobby Cottrell, but do we have a competition issue right now, or has there been a competition issue for a while in those ranks of that particular style of funny car? It seems like continually – that green Camaro is the one on top at the end of the day, whether it's qualifying or eliminations. Well, I'll tell you what, Bucky Austin, he's been out here for a long time. As you guys all know, Bucky Austin's a legend. He knows what he's doing. And also the team tests the most. You got to kind of, a lot of, I wouldn't say new guys out here, but a lot of new crew chiefs still trying to learn their way and stuff like that. But I'll tell you what, the competition has come on strong over the past couple of years. It's not just Bobby Cottrell anymore. You got Tim Boychuk out there. He's been out there for a long time. He's been so good so far here this season. Jim Maroney, he's been out there for a long time. He's competitive. And you guys got guys coming on like Billy Morris. He won his first race last year out of the California Hot Rod Reunion. You have Jeff Moniz in the quarter pounder. He's been close a few times. So there's a lot of guys stepping up. And I believe within the next couple of years, we're going to see some tighter battles for the championship in Nitro Funny Car. That'd be good. That'd be good. Definitely looking forward uh, to uh, that. Now, in the top fuel ranks, and well, let me say this. First off, what a great showing, period. And it and kudos to everybody who did devise the plan of, hey, let's run the Nostalgia Funny Cars at Bristol, and then you can go run Bowling Green. Because Bowling Green, historically, traditionally, does not have good funny car representation, but that was not the case this particular go-around, there were cars that went home, such as Levi Keenan and Chuck Lofton uh, there at the event. Oh, let me, so, let, me, let, me stop, let me stop you right there, Lee. Isn't it It's kind of funny how uh, you know, these chaos boys come over, try to go quarter-mile racing, and you know, don't make the show. And, you know, I think these Heritage oh, Series boys, okay, these, these okay. Heritage Series boys, you know. I see uh, you know, what you're saying. Just, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. saying. You know? I see what you're saying. Yet, yet those Heritage boys won't even bother showing up. With their combination I'm, I, I'm to just, run I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, I'm just now saying. Chuck, now Chuck in his program, <laughs> that car is, has been completely revamped and it is designed to be, well, something that can run within the rules of the Heritage Series. Levi Keenan's car, it is aimed, it is gold to be a Heritage Series running car. And the inverse of that is, frankly, in the chaos world, the cars that are trying to fit a particular rule package, they tend to have a more challenging time in chaos because it's not someone just running a combination that they're comfortable with and that they want to run. Well, it is run what you brung because they wouldn't have nothing. Nothing. Let me put it up with some more emphasis. Nothing for someone like a Joey Haas or a Mark White, whether it's Nimrod or Drastic Plastic. And I'm, I'm totally just kidding. You know, got a lot of respect for Levi Keenan. He's 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 had much success in the NHRA yeah. Heritage Series. And I know Chuck Lofton has hey, had a lot of success way, in Funny Car Racing, Funny Car Chaos Racing car as well. That is, it yeah. is a beautiful car. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it, oh by the way, it's a Murph McKinney chassis. Uh, but it is a uh, beautiful car. It just everything is buttoned up right. The paint, I love the name and just the theme. It it they've got such a beautiful machine and. Uh, Chuck, interestingly enough, uh, keep 
everyone keep your eye out. Uh, apparently, he's bringing the Mustang back out in Kearney, Nebraska for Funny Car Chaos. And it's basically going to be, from what I understand, like a big show car with a nostalgia body on it. So I'm looking okay. forward to what that thing's going to be like. And look at Andrew. He says maybe NA train needs to add five pounds to Bobby Castro. <laughs> oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, but wow. also shout out, shout out to Richard Hartman. As you guys all know, Richard Hartman, crew chief on Tim Wilkerson's Big Show Nitro Funny Car, uh, NASCAR Nitro Funny Car. He was racing out at the NHRA Wally Parks NHRA Nostalgia Nationals this past weekend, and the Running Wild Nostalgia Funny Car went out first round, but still a great outing for Richard Hartman. Great to see him back behind the wheel this past yes. weekend. Yes, it was good. It was good. And, you know, it was encouraging when we had Tim on a couple of weeks ago that they do want to bring that altered back out. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, Tim, if you happen to be watching, I rubbed on the chassis today. And uh, if you have any issues, it's me. Just let you know. <laughs> Let's jump now to top field because the hometown kid gets the win. Well, not technically hometown, but quite a, quite a little well, close to home. I, you know, in talking to Tyler, they – they were like, hey, this is close as home as it can really honestly mm -hmm. get other than Edgewater and Nitro Chaos, honestly. Mm -hmm. So they 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 pretty much said it was a home race. So you, you can run with that. Run with it. For the second year in a row, they walk into Bowling Green, leave with the win and the points lead. How about that? Obviously, this year, the top field guys didn't put up any points for not running at the Marsh Meet. Well, this was technically kind of their first race of the year, and Tyler Hilton gets the win, and he dominates just like Cottrell, qualifies number one, low ET, top speed, and he wins the race. Just a flat-out dominant performance sure. by Tyler Hilton. You there, Lee? I, I'm there. Keep going. You're good. Oh, okay. You, you blanked out on my side a little bit. but And what a great final round we had. Did Tyler you, Hilton. Tyler Hilton in the Great Expectations 3 top field drags are taking on Jim Murphy, the oldest guy out there. Jim Murphy double Tyler Hilton's age, and they go after it in the final round. And what a great final round it was, 572 to a 585. Tyler Hilton gets the win. And like I said, for the second year in a row, he walks in, gets the win, has the points lead. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's the favorite for the championship now with uh, three races left to go in the season. It's going to be wild. Certainly going to be wild and see who can step up out there in the top fuel ranks and get it done. And what a and we're going to have a continual interesting storyline, I think, in Funny Car in the championship case chase with you know the national events they still have to run, and then what else is traditionally on the schedule as well. So well, the the way I was told was is that there's actually going to be two so. The legends, you know, they keep the Heritage Series points, but the Heritage Series championship is so to something totally different. So there's two different point standings within the funny cars. Yes, two different ones. Yeah. What that's what I that's what I was told. Another wrinkle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so basically all okay. nine races for legends will count towards the championship, but just the only six will count towards the heritage championship. Right. So yeah, the right. Different championships. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just gotta say I was I was there Thursday. If you are out there and you have not been to Beach Bend Raceway, which I had not been until Thursday, it needs to be on your list. If you are a drag racing fan or if you are a competitor, it needs to be on your list. You need to experience it. It should be up there on at least your top 10, if not your top five. What a neat facility to experience. So uh, get out there, okay? Mm -hmm. And also, everybody, if you would like to hear from the winners from the Wally Parks NHRA Nostalgia Nationals, Tyler Hilton and Bobby Cottrell, they'll be live here on Competition Plus YouTube and Facebook tomorrow night. Kings of the Sport podcast, Bobby Cottrell and Tyler Hilton will be live with us and Michael Anderson tomorrow night. So come and hang out and check it out. It'll be a fun show. It will be. We'll be hosted by who? Darren Williams Jr. That's right. That's right. The guy it's who talks drag racing at 300 miles per hour, literally. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah, everyone. Love to say, hey, there's there's always a critic out there in the Phoenix Gallery for sure. Always. <laughs> well, man, look, I want to get your thoughts on chaos as well. I think those honestly, I think the principal drag races this weekend, that's not to slight any other series, were the event there for the Wally Parks, NHRA, Nostalgia Nationals at Beach Bend Raceway, and then the second edition of the revived Summer Nationals event nameplate at the famed Cordova Dragway, one of the most historic dragways in all of the planet, Cordova, home of the World Series of Drag Racing. They are attempting to make the Summer Nationals just as big as that World Series nameplate, bring it back, and last year, Funny Car Chaos went there to the first time, 
and we had the Jets in exhibition yet in competition, which was a historic first, quite cool. And then it rolled into this year. It was a points race, and we had some big points implications with great performances from people who aren't running for points, basically tearing up the point system in and of themselves. I know you got to see it on Flow Racing. What did you think of the action of 32 floppers going for four wins? Well, first off, I got to say shout out to Funny Car Chaos for what they're doing right now, keeping these iconic names. You talk about the Summer Nationals, the Cajun Nationals, you know, bringing out the Funny Car Classic. I love these names that they're having in Funny Car Chaos. But the story for me out the Summer Nationals this past weekend was the A field was dominated by the Big Bad Nitro Burners, and then yes. the B field was dominated by the Methanol Burners. And yes. I'll tell you what, semifinals, what a great battle it was when you had Alan Min uh, Middendorf taking on Joey Haas, the big two ba Big Bad Nitro Burners in the semifinals, and that was a great drag race right there. And he had another... Yeah. Battle of the Nitro Burners in the final round between Joey Haas and Mark White. Jurassic Plastic taking on Nimrod. And Joey Haas, you know, won the B field out at Dallas. In his, I guess you can say, to start off the year. And wins the A field here. So, uh, great to see Joey Haas back in the winner's circle. But uh, you guys know I love me some big, bad Nitro Burners, the Big Show Nitro Funny Cars. And they were the main event this past weekend of the Summer Nationals. They certainly were. Mark White was the defending A field champion from this for, for this event in 2022. And... Uh, you know, Mr. Moultrie, drastic plastic, they know how to get that car down the track. They trying to, yes, 426 Hemi. Do, 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 you have now entered the Darren zone. Darren is in an alternate timeline you know, right now. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like Mike English said, he entered the twilight zone. When he when he puts up a big speed, he goes, you yes, just entered the yes, twilight zone. You've entered yes, the twilight zone yes, right here. There you go. Good call. <laughs> yes, for sure. No, Mark White the, and the Jurassic Plastic team, they've actually did some changing in the clutch. It's, it's interesting. That car, they don't have to change the clutch every time. But they did change something in the program, and they actually started to have that phenomenon of the welding of the clutch. And uh, they had to take the drive shaft out almost every run, get the car off the track, and uh, that didn't hurt their performance. I think you know they tended in a different direction with their clutch package, at least for this event, to pick up some performance. And they did go a lower ET than what they did uh, in 2022. But Joey Haas with Mike Kern turning the knobs – uh, consistency, consistency, consistency. They finally found it. He was actually expecting something in the 40s in the final round and not just a low 50. So what happened in the final? Because, I mean, they blew the tires off right at the hit. Was it a mechanical failure or what happened? I'm not sure with Mark. I think no. they just knew that they needed some more oomph. So they, they hopped it up. They hopped it up. I'm sure they felt like they needed to hop it up against Joey. Uh, you know, Joey will tell you that it's basically a big show car. They just run it more economically. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you that. And it can certainly lay down a number as long as the parachutes don't fall out of the thing. They had, <laughs> it's been a weird issue. They had it happen in Ennis. I think it even happened in Eddyville. And it even happened Q1 at Cordova, where even though they got them pinned up and everything, the chutes just plop. Mm -hmm. And he got all of that out of the way. And yes, they went on to win in the A field. But Darren, the big talk, really in the chaos world, though the big bad nitro cars throw out those header flames and they put on a spectacular show. And look, I got to tell you, man, when you when I'm down on the top end and I'm waiting for those guys to turn around to interview them, whoever's won, and I'm watching and I'm filming and I got it zoomed in and you. I see header flames before I hear a sound. That's so cool. Oh, oh it's so That's cool. cool huh? It's so That's cool, cool huh? man. It's That's so cool. cool. <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. I love it. Yeah. But, but he, they're coming and, and, you know, get an interview, all that good stuff. But, dude, it is so interesting this year. For anyone out there that is watching that doesn't know, if they're in Funny Car Chaos, you have A, B, C, sometimes a D field. And all of these fields are actually running for one championship. You're not running for A field champion, B field champion, C field champion. No, there's just one championship. Well, this year it has been a tale not of the A field leading the way, 
but the C field and the B field leading the way. Matter of fact, most of the year it has been the C and B field, then finally A field. So in the C field at Cordova, we had a titanic matchup. Alex Barker, number one in points, went up against number two in points, Tom Furches, who is the number two finisher in points last year in 2022. Huge implications right off the bat in round one of people that usually don't run in the same field. Mm -hmm. So this was a rare time that these two were going to face each other and the points were going to get all shook up, and they did. Tom Furches, on his birthday, wins in the C field and takes the points lead. Are you going to sing the Made in America song now? No. I, you, I think you should. I, America. I'll say it for you right now. America. <laughs> America. That's a, that's a beautiful race car, too, though. Yeah, it is. So what a fascinating and wonderful weekend it was. And just so many, we got so many comments from folks that they enjoyed the program. They even said best show we've seen at Cordova and those type of things. And when I go in the stands and film, when I have opportunity, I like to chat with people. There were some folks all the way from right below Madison, Wisconsin, and they had drove two, two and a half hours to experience Funny Car Chaos at Cordova. And I was also next to one group. They were having a good time. They were hooping and hollering, and they were placing, you know, the fun little bets and things of that nature and just enjoying drag race. Love seeing that when people come to the track, and they just enjoy it. Mm -hmm. No, for sure, for sure. And, and just going back off of it, so B-Field, obviously, you know, like I said, I love the big, bad nitro burners in A-Field, but B-Field, I had a lot of a lot of dudes I was rooting for in B-Field. You talk about Jim Chase and that beautiful, beautiful 57. Oh, he lost so a, nice. That's a nice-looking race car, right? So he got nice. eliminated, and you got Tim Cullinan. As you guys all know, Tim Cullinan used to drive top field back in the day and now drives front-engine top field, but also brought a funny car this past weekend, and he goes out. And uh, yep. and you talk about Mike Minnett in the Chi-Town Hustler. I was rooting for him. You know, you got a roof for the which is another hustler. beautiful car. Oh. Another beautiful car. Just, just kept they just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. But uh, congratulations to uh, Robbie Massey. He gets to win the B field. But uh, just an all around great weekend of racing. You talk about yeah. funny car chaos and NHRA Heritage Series. Just great racing, you know. And obviously, we're going to back that up now with the national event in Norwalk this upcoming weekend. I can't wait. Yes, and and look, shout out to Robbie Massey. They apparently set out for like two years, didn't run a funny car, and they save some money, got some new parts, put everything back together. They come back at Eddyville, and at, at one time were provisional number one qualifier, certainly made it into the eliminations. They didn't have it go the way they wanted to in eliminations there, but they certainly did have it go the way they wanted it to in Cordova. And hey, Jesse believe. Clark, hey, Jesse Clark, shout out to him, making a final round in Cordova. He's runner-up. He gets past round one over Kirk Williams in Eddyville, and he's only been down the track in a funny car like 15 times. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. And you talk about returns. How about Alan Middendorf making his return? That was his Huge. first race since what? Huge. It was what, 2021, right? Or 2020? Was the it last time he was out that I can recall in a drag car period, it was the first Funny Car Chaos Funny Car Classic at the Texas Motorplex. And wow. the car had that chrome look. Yeah. That's the last time I remember, and he did not have a good classic that go around whatsoever. So good to have Alan Middendorf back out. He is one live wire, dude, <laughs> and I cannot wait for him to be back out there regularly and routinely. He's going to be at Maryland International Raceway for the first ever East Coast representation of Funny Car Chaos. So, yes, keep your eyes on him. It did not take long for him – to do something, and I'm like, that might be the chaotic moment <laughs> that I've got to put together and put out there on YouTube and Facebook. It did not take long at all, but uh, can also expect on the Funny Car Chaos YouTube channel, full recap done by yours truly on the YouTube channel if you didn't catch it on Flow Racing or you do not have Flow Racing, and, a, and underneath the flop top, which is a uh, bio type of 
piece on the Funny Car Chaos YouTube channel with Mr. Minden Mendorf himself. So looking forward to that. Darren, we could continue to talk about chaos, PDRA, Heritage Series, all of it. But we got in the green room, the man, arguably the top promoter and track owner in the nation, Mr. Bill Bader Jr. Ready, ready to talk to him? Lee, you ever heard of P.T. Barnum? Yes. I never had until Jaw Force won there about a decade ago, and he kept mentioning P.T. Barnum. And I just look it up. I remember watching that. I was a kid at the time, though, but I was watching the race. Of course, you know, I'm a Jaw Force fan. He wins the race, and he keeps seeing P.T. Barnum. I had to look him up. It's a circus. But I'll tell you what, Norwalk, they do a big time out there, most entertaining track on the circuit, and I'm, uh, I'm honored to get to talk to the man who leads it all, Bill Bader Jr. Let's get into it. We are right after this, and we want to say thank you to Weldon High Performance Pumps because they pump the show up. <laughs> Mr. Bader, welcome once again to the Power Hour. We certainly like having you on right before national events. We've done this several times. It's good to do it again. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing wonderful. Good. Good. You know, it's national event week, and I would have normally been in bed right now. So uh, there aren't many people I will stay up past 930 for uh, national event week. So. Well, we appreciate it. We know that uh, you're going to be tired, certainly after the end of this week. I am wondering did did you did you uh, did you ever get your teeth out of that highway patrolman from the Calvacada Stars? And I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, we we had a conversation and arrived at some common ground. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, look. Let's let's start there. I don't think people just realize, and we've talked about it before, but it's worth covering again. When you've got a big event like Calvacada Stars or a national event, ingress and egress is a part of, well, literally the problem. So what kind of planning does it take to get people in and to get people out? Well, you know, so oftentimes when you attend an event, you will remember your first experience and your last experience. The stuff in between helps round out the event, but Getting in and getting out, um, those are the, in my opinion, two of the most critical touch points uh, of an event experience. And we've worked really hard at getting people in off the highway. We've worked with engineering groups, and I think we become pretty good at that. But on Saturday, the Cavalcade, we had 15,000 people uh, for that event. And their last experience is not going to be the fireworks. It's going to be how... Uh, how easy or difficult it was. And we emptied the entire parking lot, I believe in about 50 minutes, which for as many cars and as many people as we had, but lots of planning, you know, we're situated on two single lane state routes. Um, our biggest event, we park 18,000 cars. Um, that's the night under fire in August. So um, we work really hard at, at, at trying to streamline, simplify, get people in, get people out. And then, of course, the easy part is entertaining them once they're in the grandstands. It's all of the stuff outside the guard walls that is the most difficult. Well, first off, Bill, it's great to finally meet you. You know, um, like I said, it's kind of honored to, to be able to, you know, talk to you right now. But um, before I ask my first question, can, Lee, can you kind of fill me on what the what happened with the Highway Patrol? Can we talk about that on air or no? Or, or, can we not? I mean, I, I'm, I'm curious. That's why I asked. I'm curious. Yeah, Lee, why don't you tell him? Uh, well, I'm, well I, uh, I just saw this man in action, and he really is concerned about what how what people experience. And up there in race control, he just noticed that uh, it's Linder's lot. Is that right? Yes, there, yeah. there were there there are two primary parking lots, and there was a disproportionate amount of movement because, and I can't believe you picked up on this, but uh, there was some. I guess we were discussing something, and I kind of abruptly departed. But yeah, yeah I guess okay, that's all coming back to me now. And and I was frustrated and couldn't get him on the radio, so I thought, you know, let's have a let's have a roadside chat on State Route 18 about 10:30. 
to um, to <laughs> to try to uh, resolve this. <laughs> but but Darren, you see, that's the quality track owner we're talking about. This man was so concerned about the fan experience, he went down and worked it out. I don't I like know too it. many doing that. I like it. I like it. I didn't last year. Didn't he like give out his phone number or something like that and have people like people were hitting him up trying to you know talk about you know what they thought they could help you know. Yeah, we, we you know at the cavalcade um, we had a number of first time attendees. In fact, we target. Um, uh, first time attendees, families, young people. And, and that's really part of the Cavalcade of Stars uh, marketing strategy. And so on Saturday, while we were announcing Don O'Neill, uh, I guess I was his assistant um, at the Cavalcade. I'm not sure how that happened, but nonetheless, I was working alongside Don O'Neill and I decided to give out my phone number Um and I said, hey, if you have a question or a comment or something you're not sure about, we were talking about how much a funny car body weighs. We were talking about why they back up, all this different stuff. Well, I ended up getting just under a thousand text messages on Saturday. And I, I stayed up several hours trying to answer as many as I could. And I got, them, I got through all, but I responded to everyone. And I think I concluded that sometime Monday evening. But um, you know, what, what a great way to interact with your fan. And as an announcer, I think my job is to educate for the person who knows everything that's going on, the seasoned race fan. Um, there's not really much I can do to, to really educate or provide insight, unique insight. So I, I, I take a little different attack from a traditional motorsports announcer. So what we did is we, we got the fans involved. And we got them asking questions. We were answering in real time. We did some different online polling or, or uh, text polling or different things. And it was remarkable, the amount of fans, the amount of racers. There were racers at New England that were responding. Um, so uh, um, um, Jackie Frick uh, uh, weighed in and sent us a picture from her home uh, watching the broadcast from the Cavalcade of Stars. So it's really about just bringing people in. And, and, and as the announcer, I can say everything that I can say anything and everything, but I try to focus on what would fans in the stand say if they had a 30,000 watt PA system. So um, I, it, it, it's a unique approach. It's fun. And it works for us at Summit Motorsports Park. So another question for me is what do kind of the fans pitch, you know, when they do call or text your number? And then for me, like I've never been to some motorsports park, but I know you guys do a big with the fireworks, the night under mm -hmm. fire. What are some of the entertainment some of the fans can expect when they come to this race? Well, to the Summit Racing Equipment and HRA Nationals, this is our uh, 2023 is is marking the 60th anniversary of the facility. The facility was opened in 1963. Um, and then my father bought the park in 1973. So it's our 50th year of, of uh, the Baders owning uh, now Summit Motorsports Park. So um, we, we did a, a, a contest on Facebook where two lucky fans, we had over a thousand people, I, I think closer to 1500 participate today, where two lucky fans are going to get to race on Saturday in identically prepared cars. The winner of that race is going to race um, I believe a fuel funny car driver, perhaps, um, they're going to win some special prizes. We're doing stuff with our ice cream where I'm going to have, uh, my signature under lids of, uh, pints of ice cream, velvet ice cream, where people will be able to win special prizes. Um, we've got fireworks Friday night and, and, and really it's about delivering a, a clean facility about uh, creating a diverse menu on the food court. Um, it's about having a PA system that's loud enough to communicate with fans in the grandstands. Um, our, our layout is unique um, in that we're a two-sided track. So we've got pros on one side, sportsmen on the other. But the minute you step through the Legends Gate, um, there's activity. I mean, there's a hundred, we're a 300 acre facility, but we'll have a hundred acres of race cars and midway and uh, unique things to see. And, and of course, being able to get into a locker room of a professional race car driver is something unique that only drag racing offers. So um, it, it's really, you know, I, I sent out an email to our camping guests tonight, and 
I, I simply welcome them back home to Summit Motorsports Park. So every year it's kind of like a reunion and it's hard to believe we have been hosting this event now for 17 years. That's pretty remarkable. Yes, I know. National event is this weekend, but I do want to go back to the Cavalcade of Stars event because, again, congratulations for the hard work you all put in. That is the best crowd I have ever seen at a regional, divisional NHRA event, Thank you. period. So how do you do it and why do you do it? Well, um, the how and why, I guess the why, um, we were uh, the home of the IHRA World Nationals. Um, we had hosted that race. I think we first hosted it in 1984. And it was no secret that the IHRA didn't have necessarily the star power of a John Force or a Tony Schumacher or uh, you go back and look at the Gary Selzies of the worlds and the Bernsteins and all of these folks. So we became very proficient in my time with the International Hot Rod Association at building an experience, creating an experience, because I couldn't yell from the mountaintops, come see John Force, but I could sell um, an experience. And when I'll never forget this in 2006 at the press conference, when I first met my division director, Jay Hollinger, he became like a second dad to me. And I was learning about this regional event because really all the focus was on the national event, right? I mean, that's the, the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And so there were, we were spending $8 million on our facility for the Summit Racing Equipment in HRA Nationals, but I very quickly realized that back then, I didn't have to be a really good promoter to sell tickets to my national event. It was, we, we had just spent $8 million. The event moved from National Trail Raceway. It was a brand new event in market. Um, we were just taking orders at that point, you know, and, and we did the work, we produced a tremendous event, got our butt handed to us in a number of ways that we learned from and made adjustments the following year. But the cavalcade was different because the cavalcade um, wasn't easy and the cavalcade took a lot of work and it took time and it took effort and it took a vision. And, and um, so I'm very proud of that event. Why do we do it? Because Quite frankly, alcohol cars are extraordinary cars. I mean, when did a 260 or 270 mile an hour race car from a standing start in 1,320 feet become pedestrian? And we made a big, when we were IHRA, you know, our, we used to get 40 plus alcohol cars, you know, to our, to our IHRA national event. And of course, the king of all that back then was Mark Thomas, right? The winningest funny car driver in IHRA history. <clears throat> but the UDRA funny car circuit, um, we were the hotbed for alcohol funny cars. And so I decided, you know what? At the Cavalcade, they're going to be our top fuel and fuel funny car. Um, we've and, and we built a show around it. And it's, it's grown into a, um, it, it's a fun event. It's a family event. Um, it's a very profitable event and it gives an opportunity for sportsmen racers and, and alcohol, which I'm going to go on record as saying right now, alcohol teams are not sportsmen teams. Anybody who goes that fast or makes that kind of financial commitment, those are professional teams. Um, they deserve that kind of exposure though, but there were more people in the stands watching alcohol at the cavalcade than perhaps we'll be watching them, um, maybe this weekend at, at the Summit Racing Equipment and HRA Nationals because they're overshadowed by the kings of the sport, right? So this is an opportunity for them um, to put their best foot forward. Uh, we've got top sportsmen, top dragster. Uh, we sprinkled in some jets and fireworks. And I'm going to tell you something, that's a tremendous day of racing. Um, and we offer that through a value proposition, free pit pass, free parking, kids 12 and under free, we do distribute a lot of tickets in the market. We put them in the hands of people that haven't been here before. Um, and it's a big giant infomercial. And, and th some of those people come back to the national event. Some of them come back to Night Under Fire. Um, 
So I guess, why do you do it? Why would you not do it? And I just love that name, the Cavalcade of Stars. It just it just sounds like a showcase and everything like that. And like you said, top alcohol drags or top alcohol funny cars, those are not sportsman racers. Those are that is not pedestrian whatsoever. But um, I talked to Lee after the event. Um, I know you were super busy during the event. He, he helped you meet uh, top alcohol drags or superstar Julie Natus. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Julie Natas, or and I, I, I don't know. Maybe I've been pronouncing her name wrong for all these years. But um, I, I just think she's just a fabulous young lady. She was. Uh, somebody I've I've watched interact with fans and yeah I made a comment that I would like to get her autograph so my man Lee uh, made that happen brought her up to race control and and I was like a giddy little kid. <laughs> good job Lee. Good job. Yeah, good job Lee. Thank thank you for that. Doing God's work, man. Doing God's work. Yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Well, the person actually doing God's work is Bill Bader Jr. here yeah. <laughs> and getting it all done. When <clears throat> look national event. You know, we've talked about its challenges, and certainly there's challenges involved. What are the rewards, though? And I don't mean just from a business standpoint, but at the end of the day, weekend done, National Event has come through, circus moves on to the team at Summit Motorsports Park. What are the rewards for a job well done? Um, I, I think for, for our team, it, our, our measuring stick is not profit. It's never been our measuring stick. Um, it's not about net income. Uh, sure, that is necessary. We, we have 23 full-time people uh, at our racetrack. We have another 430 event staff. We, we have a tremendous amount of debt we need to service. We have a 300-acre facility that, that in my mind, uh, needs all kinds of work done to it. So that all takes money. But at the end of the day, that is not the measuring stick, because if you become strictly profit driven, um, you will forget your guest. Um, you know, and, and my background by trade is in accounting and corporate finance. So it's very easy to sit in my office late at night. Right. And and I make all of these decisions that look fantastic on paper but they don't necessarily translate well in the field on event day. Um, hey, we'll raise the ticket price uh, $10 a ticket times X amount of people. Boom, big big number. Um, we can skinny back fireworks you know, here, or we can cut this, or maybe we don't need that, or maybe we add this. Um, that is, I think, a common mistake that happens all too frequently in our sport. So my ultimate measuring stick, my team's ultimate measuring stick is our level of guest satisfaction. So when we get giddy, it's about all of the emails, all of the text messages, all of the cards, all of the phone calls that come in where people talk about their experience, their experience with a loved one. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a husband and wife. Maybe it's a grandson and a grandfather. Um, so I, I think the measuring stick and the ultimate reward is how your guests feel about their Norwalk experience. And that is something my father started. It's something that is central focus um, in everything we do. And it, this is the most grueling week of our year. Um, we, we had a Friday test in tune. We had 500 cars for our Edelbrock Super Series race, which is about normal. Um, we, we come in Sunday morning for a series of meetings with, with, we have a parking meeting, we have a security meeting, we have a operations meeting with all of our uh, management and supervisor. There were about 70 people at that meeting. And we just run now until, I mean, we've got, I don't know, a couple hundred, 150 sportsman teams sitting in Linder's lot right now. Um, the park is bustling. The phone is ringing off the hook. Um, so it is a, it is a marathon. It is a grueling event. It's an exhausting event. But what makes it all worthwhile is looking in the eyes and in the faces of your guests. They're smiling. They're they're stomping their feet. They're cheering for their favorite driver. They're getting their autograph. Um, and you want to talk about God's work with everything happening outside in the world right now for people to come into your home uh, for a day or for multiple days and forget about the toxic outside world and just come in and, and allow themselves to be receptive to being entertained for one day or two day or three days or four day. What, what is be better or more magical than that? 
Uh, I definitely do agree with that. And and just going back off the challenges and, you know, and um, the rewards of this race uh, last year, and I, and I hate to go down this road, but last year I do a national event recap show and I went live to recap last year's race. And I was like, we got the news of your dad's passing. And so Andrew has a question. He goes, um, he wants to ask you just, you know, how has this road been different for you this past year? What's been the challenges, you know, kind of running the racetrack without your dad this, uh, this past year? Um, you, you know, my dad, uh, when he bought IHRA in 1997, 98 timeframe, um, he basically came in, said, Hey, um, <laughs> here are the keys. Uh, he gave me one piece of advice. He, he had a blue mechanical pencil that he held up and he said, Hey, don't ever run this with one of these. Meaning don't, he was trying to remove the bean counter out of me, um, and, and he went to IHRA, he stepped down from IHRA in 2004, um, started focusing on his mountain in Idaho. Um, I asked him to come back and oversee the expansion in 06, 07. Um, and he lingered a few years, um, but I think by 2010, um, he was a full-time resident of the state of uh, Idaho. And while he was an incredible resource to me and somebody that I could always talk to or bounce ideas off. He, he was very removed um, from Summit Motorsports Park. And I think he was at peace with that. He enjoyed his life. He enjoyed Debbie. He enjoyed the time in Idaho. And so it, it, it I mean, I used to, I've talked to my dad more in the last year since he has passed um, than I did when he was alive because he was working from sun up to sun, sun, sundown. So if I wanted to talk to him, I would send him an email and say, Hey dad, hope you're doing well. Uh, when do you have time to chat? And then, uh, love you, Bill. And, and he would say, Hey, I'm doing this today. I'm grading this tomorrow. Um, I'm, so we would set up a time to talk. And like I said, what, what an extraordinary resource an incredible mentor and teacher, but but um, so it, 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 let me say this, it, it, it has not been that terribly different. Um, I, I recognized something this week. Mary Lenzen asked me five questions and she sent out an email and she really caught me off guard because I always answer honestly. I don't ever posture. And she asked me what was the most special thing about the inaugural year. And and I say the reason we are an NHRA facility was because in the 70s, uh, Bob Daniels, who was then the NHRA division director for our division, um, had he had my father had met with him at a Holiday Inn restaurant. I don't know where um, in Indy, maybe or Cleveland. I don't know. And my father desperately wanted an NHRA national event. And Bob Daniels said, Bill, I'm sorry to tell you, you will never have an NHRA national event. So my father was devastated, um, reached out to Ted Jones at the IHRA. The rest is history. So when I made a call to Tom Compton to say, hey, we were interested in, in hosting a national event, um, that took three years. And my father found out about it because I started talking with Tom in 2004 while my father was still the president of IHRA. And it was one of these typical father, son, my father called, dispensed with pleasantries and said, what the F are you doing? And, um, and I told him and he said, never happened, never happened. And I said, well, guess what? Um, that was all I needed. That's the best way to motivate me is to tell me no. So it took three years and in August or um, in, yeah, the day on Monday after the IHRA World Nationals, we made the announcement of the move to NHRA. So the most special moment of that inaugural event was sharing that with my dad. We were standing on the starting line on Sunday of the Summit Racing Equipment NHRA Nationals. The anthem ends, skydiver lands, fuel cars light, um, music plays, and we're standing there um, behind the starting line. And I gave him a hug and told him I loved him. And I said, we'll never again have to worry about filling these grandstands on the, on, on a Sunday of our national event. And so that was special. And then what I realized is my father ended up passing on Sunday of the national event. And, um, I'm sure there's, 
I'm sure there is something to all that. I'm not quite sure because I, I stumbled on that. I stumbled upon that quite by accident in talking with Mary just a few days ago. So um, I, I, I'm sure there's some meaning to that. And I'm sure I will discover that at some point. But, you know, the best way I can honor my dad is work my ass off and and deliver the Norwalk experience. Um, and that's what my team is committed to. And, um, and, and it's true, you know, I'm on a run or I'm in a situation or something presents itself and I will say, okay, dad, you know, I, I, I because now I can talk to him whenever I want. If, 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 if you are a God fearing person, you understand that. So, um, I chat with him all the time. We have conversations. Um, and, um, so he's he's with all of us and he's at that racetrack and you can see evidence of him everywhere. Well, Bill, thank you for sharing that. And last question for you for the evening, then you can go get some sleep and get prepared for the spectacular <laughs> week and weekend you all have ahead of you there at Summit Motorsports Park. What does the future look like what are the dreams what are the the heights what are the what, what's down the road because i know that you are not an individual that's just going to rest on what you've got it is move forward it is make it that much better well what does better look like because it looks pretty darn good right now <laughs> well i i i think Quite frank, boy, I'll tell you what. Are there any easy questions um, tonight? Because <laughs> and Darren is, stand, is sitting there with this sober <laughs> look on his face, and I'm thinking, am I answering these questions well, or am I not, or what? What is going on? Um, you know, we and, and and again, I only know how to be completely honest. Um, we have an incredible sport. Um, we have the fastest accelerating sport on the planet. We have a sport that is tailor-made for, a, for, a, for human consumption by humans that have a short attention span. We can show fans a new race every 15 seconds, every 10 seconds, every 20 seconds. Um, we've just got to be better. Um, we, 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 we've, we've, we, we, the future, I feel, for drag racing is unlimited. Um, but we've got to be better. Uh, creature comfort features. Um, we, we, why are we afraid to put an unconditional money back guarantee on an experience at our racetrack? Um, uh, we, we, it's an expensive sport. Um, it's an exhilarating sport. Um, th there are things on the business side that need to be brought under control. But, but the long and the short of it is we, we are the last great unrealized sport, American-made sport in the United States. Um, we, we are, you know, the product life cycle, right? Infancy, growth, maturity, decline. Um, I think we're in the infancy, even though we're 60 years old. Um, I, I think we have incredible potential. We have incredible growth potential. Um, we, we, we are a family-centric sport. I think we need to focus on that. I think we're a Christian conservative sport. I think we need to focus on that. Our drivers don't take a knee. Our drivers are patriotic, red, white, and blue Christian Americans. Um, I think we need to play to our strength. And I think we, not, we need to not be afraid to do that. Um, I think we need to make improvements to our facility. I mean, for as proud as I am of our facility, I, I could, I, I've got a list 20 pages long of stuff that's wrong. Um, you know, flush bathrooms, showers, paved parking lots, um, well-lit parking lots, um, uh, more midway attractions, um, better Wi-Fi. Um, I mean, look at Levi Stadium. Look at where the Cowboys play. Look at, look at the major league stick and ball venues. Um, if, if, if we want to rival um, the stick and ball sports, we, we've got to be better. And we've got to reinvest and we've got to passionately be committed to our fan base. Um, I have 300 acres, um, gosh, multi-use facility. Um, I'd like to, I'd like to look at, um, different 
forms of entertainment. I mean, I covered 450 feet of my racetrack last year to host the World Series of Pulling. Um, we need to, I could cover my racetrack and host a football game. I could build, I could have an XFL team next door, um, road courses, concerts. Um, uh, I don't know, anything entertainment, anything that can entertain mom, dad, and the kids, um, water parks. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think there is a limit. Um, we just have to be better at what we do. Well, Bill Bader, thank you for everything you do for the sport of drag racing. And I'd say you love putting the, pan, the fan first and all your passion. Um, I'm going to leave you off with this. And this probably isn't an easy question right here either, but I just got to know because this is something that just, it just irked me for so long. Um, I did a video about Eddie Hill not too long ago talking about his 1988 season. And so you mentioned the World Nationals a lot and how the World Nationals used to go up, you know, the week right before the U.S. Nationals. I know yep. a lot of guys used to bring, you know, their newer, newer stuff to the World Nationals, you know, before taking it to the U.S. Nationals. So I'm just going to ask you this. Eddie Hill, 1988. I read a National Director article saying he debuted his direct drive high girl only setup at the U.S. Nationals. But did he actually debut it at the World Nationals the week before? Do you know or not? I believe he did, but I don't want to misspeak. Um, okay. I, I was doing PR for IHRA back then. And I'm going to tell you something. One of the most loving adorable husband and wives I have ever had the pleasure to deal with was Eddie and Ursi Hill. Um, we were, we were going to do press and um, we dropped Ursi off at a mall to shop while Eddie and I went and did the press junket. And he never took his eyes off of her until she was in the door of that mall. Um, that is one of the finest husband and wives I've ever had the pleasure to deal with. And, and, um, you know, I, I, I would have to ask Eddie that question. Um, but we were oftentimes, um, the proving grounds for a lot of stuff that was going to be showcased a weekend later, um, at the big race, so to speak. And that always bugged me a little bit because I was pretty proud of our race too. Um, I remember one year, Scott Coletta, debuted his new Toyota body and he went off the end of the track into the sand trap and he was in the finals. Scott Coletta was in the finals with this new Toyota body that was going to be debuted at the U S nationals. And he was running, I believe Gary Densham in the finals and Densham comes up to me and, 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 and we were waiting for the finals. And I believe this took place at our last World Nationals in 2006. Um, and Coletta made the decision that they were going to split a professional category. Because Coletta needed to get that body home, to get it rehabbed, to get it ready to go to debut at the U.S. Nationals. So I believe it was Scott Coletta. I believe it was Gary Densham. And Connie didn't ask to split. Connie told us how this was going to all go down. <laughs> and Gary Densham heard that there was going to be a split. And I said, Gary, talk to Connie. He said, oh, Connie, Connie made that decision. I said, yes. And he said, okay. And he turned around and walked away. So I know that the IHRA World Nationals were the proving grounds for a lot of things that made their world debut on the big stage at the U.S. Nationals one week later. Lee, do we have time for one more question? Just one more. Do we have time? If, if Bill wants to take it, if you, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. He's not tired yet. <laughs> no. So <laughs> just speaking on Scott Coletta, um, back to that 08 season, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe – Scott Coletta passed the race right before you guys, they came to Norwalk. How did your, you and your whole team kind of handle that um, after the passing of Scott Coletta? So um, I had a meeting scheduled for Monday morning with Conrad at his office at Willow Lake Run. And I had heard what happened at Englishtown and it broke my heart. I mean, the Colettas and the Baders are very close. I called Connie and I said, listen, I'm very sorry. Um, we can reschedule this meeting um, in, in, in typical Coletta diatribe, he, rah, 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 get up here. 
So I drive up Monday morning. Now, this is the Monday morning immediately following Scott's passing. And I had a business, I had a problem with the FAA and the airport that lives just north of me. And um, Connie, to his credit, set that aside, helped me with my problem. And he said, now I have a favor. I would like you to spearhead um, a memorial for Scott. And so on that Thursday, the week of um, our national event, we um, rented the high school and we held a memorial for Scott Coletta. Um, and I believe that we were the last quarter mile race on the NHRA tour. Um, and it was that weekend um, and the memorial service leading up to the, that weekend of the second annual Summit Racing Equipment NHRA Nationals. But, uh, and of course, we have a national event to get ready for. It's our second year. Tickets are on fire. Uh, ticket sales are on fire. And, um, but I, I, there was no way I could tell Connie no. Um, we had been through a lot together over the years. Uh, Connie match raced for us. Connie is... Connie is an extraordinary human being on, on so many fronts. And I just have so much regard for he and his family. Scott was a dear friend. Um, so how could we not do that? That, that was a tough one. It was certainly emotional. Um, but it, 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 it's just something, you know, that you do for a friend. Well, Mr. Bader, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for thinking about those that, though you may not know them, you want them to be friends of your facility and you treat them friendly. Appreciate that. We know you all are going to have a spectacular weekend. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you for being on the Competition Plus Power Hour. Well, listen, gentlemen, I appreciate the opportunity and I would be happy to come on again uh, to either follow up or maybe on some other less busy week uh, throughout the course of the year. But um, I always enjoy this and, and uh, some great questions. And I, I just am very appreciative for the opportunity. Thank you both so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we got a lot more than what we thought we were going to get on that one, didn't we, Darren? Man, that was so cool. Like I said, it was an honor to talk to Bill Bader. Like, you know, for somebody who's been a drag racing fan all his life, I'm just a fan of drag racing. So be able to, you know, be on the show and talk to, you know, when you think of track track owners and track promoters in HRA, Baders, Bandamiers, and Smiths. It's like the top three right there. It's the top yes. three. So, I mean, it's, it, was, it, was, it was an honor. Got to interview yes. Bandamir, so now I get to cross Bader off the list now, too. That's pretty cool. Yes, very cool. Very cool. And Hey. Oh, you got it. You got it. Again, they just do everything well there. Mm -hmm. You you've got to suck it up and mark it off the list. I do, I do. Like I said, there's always next year. There's always next year. But how much how much ice cream are you gonna eat this uh this this upcoming weekend? Just curious. Well, I hope Bill's actually not listening. I have not had ice cream at Norwalk actually. I haven't. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's the line. Because everybody wants it. <laughs> it is a long line. Sure. And I am usually running around doing the work, doing the deal, telling the story. <laughs> Mike said that's a shame. <laughs> that's and, a shame. <laughs> and I I and then and now this year I I'm doing good and I'm tracking all my goals and ice cream does not help, especially not no pint. <laughs> Lee, get you some ice cream. Stop playing around. Get you some ice cream. I'm going to do it this there, year. There, just hit the gym when you get back to the hotel. Stop playing That's around. Right. Get you some ice cream. That's right. Just That's do right. That. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to uh, do do that and get some. And they got look. They got some great flavors. I do know Sean Bellamere. Uh, his favorite flavor is Moose Tracks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can do you can do you can do a lot there. So when you're when you're a lean, mean, sexy chocolate machine like myself right here, you can eat whatever you want, not gain any weight. You know, you can, you know. So wow. I mean, just saying, just saying, you know, eat burgers, wow. pizza, ice cream, don't matter. I can have whatever I want. Don't gain no weight. You know, fast okay. metabolism. You know, it's easy. Okay. okay. I do look very greasy tonight, though. I don't know why. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we go down that route any further, we do want to inform you 
Erica Enders, we still plan on having her on the show. She is in transit, going to get home and then pop on. That's what we have been informed of the situation. So we're going to take a quick break, come back, and we're going to continue to talk about, well, what? Drag racing, along with you here on the Competition Plus Power Hour. Competition Products, your source for hardcore engine parts for street, strip, and oval track. Our free catalog is packed with hundreds of product lines from the best-known manufacturers in the performance industry. Lowest prices guaranteed. Free shipping and handling on all orders over $149 in the continental U.S. Need expert advice? Our knowledgeable staff is just a phone call away. Competition Products, race parts sold by racers since 1970. Classic car owners, make your headlights over twice as bright with Holly Retrobright LED headlights. A plug-in replacement for those dim halogen seal beams, Retrobright maintains that classic look and lasts six times longer. Stay safe and click the link below to learn more. Well, Darren, while we've got a little bit of time, everybody certainly will be talking about what rolling into a national event, top fuel, funny car, pro stock, pro stock motorcycle, even pro mod. But we had here just a few moments ago, Mr. Bill Bader Jr. And at the Cavalcade of Stars, you have a situation where, well, I'll tell you what, we'll pause that. <laughs> we'll pause that. There's, there's, there's a rather. The more, champ is here. The champ is here. The champ yeah. is here. The, the champ, the five time champ is here. And uh, we'll uh, get her in in just a moment once she's got the camera situated she's ready to go getting getting all the fidgeting out of the way and and are you good erica we can see you can, can you <laughs> thumbs up she's good she's good we will uh take another break and right after the break we'll get miss enders on and uh, chat with her which again don't call to come back because she never left if you want to take your vehicle's performance to new heights, you got to give it P. Like our original equipment technology antifreeze and coolant, our formulas match the vehicle manufacturer's technology requirements so that we have the perfect match for every vehicle. That's one reason why Peak is among the fastest growing brands of coolant in America. We work harder to earn the trust of people like you every day. And she walked away. Here. Look at all the... She's here. Okay. You can finish the drink or whatever you were getting if you need to. What, what I is... wish that's what I was getting. <laughs> well, hey, it is good to see you. I've been so busy with chaos and the nitro ranks. I haven't wondered myself down in the pro stock ranks in a while and chatted. So good to have you on the show tonight. Thank you for having me. Well, Erica, first off, I mean... Thank you for being on our show here tonight and coming off a big time win in Bristol a couple weeks ago. And I'm not just a win, but qualified number one and got the win. You know, how good does it feel for you and your team to be back on track heading into Norwalk this uh, upcoming weekend? Uh, it definitely feels awesome. Um, as I'm sure most people, if they watch the coverage, could tell it was a little overly excited. But I mean, it has been quite the dry spell for us considering the success that we uh, left off with last year with 10, uh, 10 wins and 13 final round appearances. So uh, it's kind of hard to top that, <clears throat> excuse me, but to start the season off uh, the way we did was definitely not what we expected, but we knew that they couldn't keep us down forever. And if we just put our heads down and, and went to work that we would be just fine. And, and we did just that. And we thought we had stumbled upon our problem in Chicago. Um, first round of qualifying, we ran pretty decent. And then it just kind of snowballed into something that we weren't expecting. And then first round of eliminations in Chicago, we were low of the session. Unfortunately, I lost on the whole shot, but we were like, okay, here's our glimmer of hope that we were hoping for. We went and tested in Tulsa. And after our test in Tulsa, we were confident that we found what our issue was. And we went to Bristol and we were lights out. Uh, low qualifier, as you mentioned, and went on to win the race. So Super excited for my entire JHG team. It was extra special because Jason and Nikki Johnson are from Tennessee. So it was it served as their home track and uh, their first win with them as our primary sponsor. So it was uh, it was pretty significant and definitely meant a lot to us. And, you know, being Monday morning quarterback, like looking back, seven races isn't like a huge 
amount of time, but to us, it felt like an eternity. So to get back in the winner's circle was uh, was super special for me. And just going back to last year, and I, I know you probably you know, forgot about this, but just going back to last year in the final round against your teammate Aaron Stanfield, um, with you blowing the motor, was that kind of one where you kind of wanted to get back just with just how crazy and dramatic it was? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that final round was really, uh, really interesting. It kind of tried to take the tire off as I let the clutch out and I looked over and I didn't see Aaron. So I knew that he had shook as well. And so I just stayed in it um, around the third gear portion of the racetrack. I knew I had a pretty significant issue and normally I would have aborted the run. But in the final round, um, just being the finals of a national event, uh, my mindset and then my my team owner has reiterated to me a thousand times that we're in the finals we just he said you leg it whether the rods are hanging out the side of it or not so we were definitely going for it and you know smoke filled the cockpit and I wasn't able to see or breathe but I just tried to stay where I thought was straight and uh and hopefully Aaron wouldn't catch us but uh he did and the only justification for that was that he was my teammate and it was his first Father's Day as a dad. So that was a that was a pretty cool win for him. But definitely one of those ones we could get back and uh, wish we could get back. Uh, but it, it worked out the way it was supposed to. You are now going to be a part of your first Too Fast, Too Tasty challenge. That whole program, I'm sure you thought you all would be in that a lot sooner and not just this time of the season. But the whole program, you've been seeing people participate in it. What are your thoughts on it? I, I think it's awesome. I think it's really important that Mission stands behind it and they're supporting our sport and our class, uh, especially. And to have a world champion like Angel be uh, affiliated with it is even that much more special. So uh, TJ Coughlin, my teammate, won the first one that they had in Phoenix, Arizona this year. And it was really exciting to be a part of that winter circle. Um, and as you mentioned, I didn't think it would take us this long to be a part of it, but I'm really excited. And and they do a really cool autograph session at each event that the Too Fast, Too Tasty, Too Tasty Challenge, I need to work on that, <laughs> is present at and uh, do an autograph session for the fans. And then, of course, have the have the shootout uh, at the racetrack as well. So I'm excited to be part of it. It'll be, uh, I think it's the Greg Anderson, Aaron Stanfield, and Christian Quadra. So three elite cars have a shot at taking home uh, that victory next weekend and, and we're looking forward to participating. So certainly there were some type of issues with the performance, but I'm curious with the way the point system is and you really need to get hot at the right time. Let's say Bristol doesn't go the way in which it, did let's say it's another round one exit didn't qualify as well as you all would have wanted does a, a time frame of bristol or norwalk or when is the time frame that as a professional team you start saying we need to get hot now so that we can turn things around in the countdown <laughs> well, well, we wanted to be hot coming off the trailer at the first race this year, uh, as I'm sure everybody does. And th those were our expectations coming off of the year that we had last year. And honestly, we didn't change a whole lot with my race car. So we were slightly flabbergasted at our lackluster performance. So um, we just we just kept working at it. And if you guys remember in 2016, coming off two back to back world championships in 14 and 15, um, we had all the rule changes and we switched manufacturers and we had absolutely the most devastating season ever. So, um, you know, someone in the press room in Bristol asked me, you know, how has this seven race drought been like mentally and as a, on the human side of it, the human aspect of it, like all of the negativity and the things that have been said and done and what's happened or transpired this season, the things that we went through in 16 we learned that it made us stronger and that you cannot break us. So nothing has ever been that bad uh, with with my partnership here at Elite Motorsports as it was in 2016. And fast forwarding to this year, yes, it was a very challenging start, but we knew, we knew our other cars were running decent, um, mediocre for our standards, but decent, and we're able to park a couple of them in the winter circle throughout the season. But we knew if we just hammered down and put our heads down and went to work and ignored the naysayers and just focused on what we need to focus on that we were going to be just fine. So I truly believe that we have turned our season around. I think that you can expect great things from us uh, moving forward as people have in the past, but 
um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely super challenging, but to long winded answer to your question, um, there's not really a, a point of comfort in when, okay, well, this is, this is the deadline when we need to do well, but up to this point, like, were we pissed and uh, disappointed? Yes, but we weren't, we weren't worried. Um, we knew with the countdown structure and then now, you know, since COVID, if you compete at all the races, they have the participation trophy entry into the countdown. So we knew we were going to be able to race for a championship, but you definitely want to position yourself as, as high up in the points as possible going in. Um, just from our performance last weekend, we went, I think, from 15th in points to like eight and we're just like a round or two out of six. So I think uh, if we just stay on track, we'll be we'll be right back in the mix of things and we'll uh, we'll go after defending our title. Erica, for someone who, who races for championships on a consistent basis, who's won a championship in the final round of the final race of the season and just knows <laughs> how important little points are, how important is it for you and your team to get on the road and start competing in, mission, in these mission foods, too fast, to taste and challenges to get those little points? Because as you know, like I just said, you've won a championship final round, final races of the season. It came down just a few points. How important is it for you and your team to start racking up those points and have those going into the countdown? Uh, it is absolutely super crucial. And that's something that we discussed as well. Like these points are going to be huge, especially when they're put into your total after the countdown starts. So that's going to definitely help your position uh, position as well. But uh, great memory on the 14 final round, having the winner take all for the championship. Had we lost that final round to Jason Line, we would have lost the championship by one lousy point. We won the championship by 19. And uh, it was just a huge blessing. So yes, every point matters when you when you want to get lazy about stuff or think that one bonus point or three bonus points here or there doesn't make a difference. It absolutely does because it made a difference in 2014. So we just, uh, we're going to do our best to qualify as well as we can because the quickest rounds during qualifying are worth three, two and one baby points um, added up across three and four runs through the weekend can be uh, more than a half of a round of eliminations on Sunday. So everything matters. Um, this too fast, too, cha too tasty thing is it's going to be really, uh, really important to us. And I'm thankful that there have only been a few of those races so far this season. So hopefully we can uh, make those appearances count the rest of the year. So Darren yeah. recalls oh. the final round of Bristol last year, the smoke fest that uh, you had. I recall Greg Anderson this past Thunder Valley Nationals mechanical issues. They had just attempted to roll it up, see if they could get one, and they were not able to get the round win. Honestly, recognize that there seems to be more mechanical failures in pro stock than I think there has ever been since the inception of pro stock. What is going on out there amongst all the competitors where we're seeing more mechanical failures? Um, honestly, a lot of it has to do with the quality of parts. Um, it is such a long wait to get the parts that we need. And then we get them when, when we get them, they're not, uh, living as long as they did in years past. And, um, the quality is just, is just way less. It's not the manufacturer's problem. It's the people making the materials and you can't get it. So, um, we've had to definitely readjust our, our site. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't work back there in the engine shop, but I, I'm back there enough and I hear them talk enough that that is definitely a huge problem for people across the board. And, um, you know, Greg, I think they discovered that they had hurt the engine the round before um, and didn't identify it until too late and came up and tried to do a burnout and ended up blowing the motor up. So um, super not great for him. And despite the fact that we're like, ultra competitive like you don't wish that upon anybody because catastrophic failures like that can cost upwards of a hundred thousand dollars so it's not fun it's not fair and it's not okay like i i guarantee you i would have much rather raised him than, than taking that competition by but um things worked out the way that they needed to for us to get that victory that day so it is what it is but it's um parts are definitely an issue and and it sucks but people are dealing with it across the board so you just gotta take the good with the bad i guess and just going back in time, me and Lee were sitting in the stands. Remember this, Lee, 2019 World oh, yeah. Finals, oh, when Greg played the qualifying game and got oh, you round one. And when you won, Lee, the, that was the loudest crowd, crowd pop I've ever heard of the drag race. It was good. It was, it was, it was good. pretty good. That was, was, that was good. amazing. Yeah. It was good. Yes, it was good. Yeah, first time me and Darren ever met, he's like, hey, are you MMR? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm that dude. And first time I'd ever been to Pomona, and uh, I told him, one, that John Force would smoke the tires at 300 feet against Robert Hyatt. And he did what, Darren? 
He smoked the tires at 300 yeah, feet. Yeah, and I said, <laughs> and I and I said, who would win between Greg and Erica? I think you picked Greg. I, I did not <gasps> pick Greg. I did not I'm pick. I'm Greg. joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. He he picked he picked you, Erica. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally just joking. <laughs> but we, you know, as fans, media, we we. You know, we love to attach to rivalries, and uh, certainly you and Greg have that. And I think it's good for the class. I think it's good for the sport. But you've even mentioned it. You know, you're not old, but it's like you're, you know, the veteran of the class along with Greg, and you all still have this rivalry. What do you think is going to be the future rivalry in pro stock. Who's it going to be? I know I know. right now we have this elite KB thing going, but individually, who do you think it's going to be in the future when uh, Greg's off the scene and, uh, d- dare I say, you're off the scene as well later on, much, much later on down the road? <laughs> well, hopefully much later. Um, I would probably have to say uh, TJ Coughlin, Aaron Stanfield, and Dallas Glenn. Um, they're the real young heavy hitters, and um, I'm privy to the data from our camp, and I know the caliber of driver that Aaron Stanfield and TJ Coughlin are. Um, you know, and, and then speaking on the other side of that, the Quadra boys, like as soon as like they get their comfort and confidence where we all think it is, uh, I think they're going to definitely be a force to be reckoned with because those boys are extremely talented. Uh, They can let the clutch out and be double O and do it consistently, not just close your eyes and take a stab at it. They are are tremendous drivers. So I think there's a lot of really, really talented young guns, but um, right to the front, I'm going to put, I'm going to put TJ, Aaron and, and Dallas, Christian and Fernando Jr. I, I agree with that. I can't argue with that. And I want to tell like a really funny like side story real quick. Like last year when, well, not last year. So 21, when all these new kids were coming about and they were just, all the storylines were like Greg Anderson and Erica Enders. And I hate the word old. So we'll use veterans, um, the veterans of the class. Um, you know, these young guns are, are gunning for them and they're going to take them off their throne and all this crap. So Greg Anderson and I, who have, um, and, and I'll speak for my side. I have a tremendous amount of respect for the guy. I know our relationship started off rocky at the beginning of my career, but through the years we've become friends. And um, as it's gone on, Greg is Greg is really funny. He has a dry sense of humor, but he's a smart ass and he's really cool actually and super talented and has the work ethic of someone I've never seen before. But um, we made this we made this deal that we weren't gonna let these kids get us. And I'll be damned at Pomona at the, at the world finals. And we went to the championship banquet. We, we had a shot together and we finished one and two, him and I. So we were able to, uh, to keep them from doing what the media said that they were going to do to us. And I guarantee you that's our goal this year. And his season hasn't started off as well as he had hoped either. Him and I have been struggling and I, uh, I promise you do not count that guy out. So we're going to do our best to do it again and we'll see what happens. I like it. And so final question for me, Erica. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to, the right way to kind of format this question. So as we all know, you know, you talked about trying to kind of getting off social media um, in Bristol this past weekend. You know, I would think for you, for somebody who's accomplished so much, 44 career wins, five championships. I mean, it's pretty much done it all. One of the greatest pro stock drivers of all time. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't that be enough for the psyche to kind of say, hey, I don't really have to listen to all these critics and I really don't care what you think? Just this is my opinion. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I definitely feel like my jar of craps to give is pretty empty at this point in my life and my career, um, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. But I just, this is my favorite part of, of my life up to this point, as far as work life is concerned, because I'm finally at a point where I think that we've proven ourselves. And we don't have anything left to prove and it really doesn't matter what Joe Blow from BFE Illinois thinks of me. Like it just, it doesn't matter. We've, we've done everything that there is to do. We're the winningest female world champion in the history of our sport, blah, blah, blah. You can go down our list of accolades. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I shouldn't have to listen to it, but I was talking to 
to a dear friend of mine today on the phone and like social media gives people this platform to spew hate and disrespect with zero consequence. Like nobody's going to whoop your butt because you said something mean because they're sitting at home behind a little keyboard in their mom's basement talking crap when they've accomplished absolutely nothing in their entire life. So I have uh, a tremendous amount of hate for people that don't have the huevos to be able to say what they need to say to your face or to come come play with us write a check get a car get a hauler get a team come out and see if you can you can take us on if that's how you really feel so i just i don't enjoy that aspect of it and before bristol i did i deleted instagram and and facebook uh kim jong-un or somebody hacked my twitter so i don't even have twitter anymore but um my sister fortunately handles all that stuff for me but i just I was like, I am not going to let these people disrupt my mental state right now. I just want to focus on getting back to work, getting back to what I'm good at. And it, and it worked. So um, you just have to be able, that's part of the mental toughness. That's the most challenging is to like, because as humans, right, we want everybody to like us. We want to please everyone. We want to do as well as possible. And um, it's just like a very interesting aspect of the sport, like, or for anybody at this point in our lives, right? Like 20 years ago, we didn't have social media. So it's definitely a uncharted territories, but it's, uh, it's something that I felt was important to do is to just shut that crap off and not listen to these people and to go out and show them what we're good at. And we did just that. So I think I'm going to continue that for as long as I can. I like it's, it. it's fascinating yeah. that you can get all the hate on social media, yet no one comes up to the you at the track and says anything. It's like, where are you at at the track? They don't, and they won't. It blows my mind in the, the eruption of cheers from the grandstands. Like when you watch Fox Sports 1 coverage, like when we when we turn the wind light on, it's like it's so opposite of the, the hate that is spewed on the Internet. And it's, it's just it's just weird. And I, I think a lot of people, like I entered in super comp for this weekend in Norwalk. I was going to drive one of my friend's cars and then she was able to, to get off of work and come drive. So I, I withdrew, but like the crap that people were saying about me taking a spot on the entry list. Um, it's just like, it blows my mind. So I waited till it was that quota. I entered with my provisional of being a pro driver and a five-time world champion. I didn't take their spot away. And it's just like, this is crap. She doesn't have any grade points. But anyway, whatever. We can talk about this crap all day long. But it blows my mind. But if you have a problem, just come say hi. <sighs> <laughs> What's this? In, I just, instead of, hey, we've got this five-time champion professional drives pro stock let's get extra spo exposure for a class add a great track to do it maybe call Bader. maybe we work something out people understand super comp just a little bit more fox hey can you do some tie-in with pro stock and super comp? there's so many more advantages to it i get I, look i get it i don't know how many times i've had someone say something about beard hat or shades and never about interviewing so the problem isn't that so just shut up and they've never come to me at the track. It is amazing. It's so weird, isn't it? So weird. <laughs> I, I feel you, girl. I feel you. Thank you. <laughs> what do you say about me, Lee? Darren? Hang on. If you're if you're on the show long enough, they will hate you too. Just beware. People I know, are mean. I know, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. <laughs> but I mean, I'll, how can I'll you not me. like you? I don't get it. I don't get how people are so awful. Oh, no, it's it's it is again. It is a, a modern psychological problem and factor that the keyboard is that barrier and people aren't getting popped in the face and they're not being dealt with and so on and so on and so on. For sure. For sure. Well, uh, we're going to let you go here really soon. I know you're looking forward to Norwalk. Last question for you of the evening. Uh, do you intend to eat ice cream and what flavor will it be? I am. Uh, my favorite is Moose Track. I think it has the little miniature Reese's peanut butter cups in it. But you can't go wrong with mint chocolate chip. I don't know. Usually, like I'll I'll give one of my crew guys a hundred bucks and say, "Go see if you can pay somebody to cut the line and bring back as much ice cream as you can." So. <laughs> yes, yes. I was about to say, how do you get past the line? Is there a driver pass or what? There you go. <laughs> no, no, there's not. And uh, but I always I always get one of our our crew guys to go up there and they'll go to the side door and say, "Here's a hundred bucks. Can you just give us like ten ice creams and you can keep the change?" So, um, but the line is so crazy. And I'll tell you what, racing at Norwalk is so much fun. The Bader family, 
are excellent at what they do. The track is in fine condition from the people that take your tickets at the gate to the people that bring you ice or pick up the trash at the end of the night. Everybody is kind and dressed to the nines. They got their shirts tucked in. They got their white pants on. And it's just, it's an awesome place to race. And what the Bader family has done for our sport is tremendous. It is definitely one of the top, top tracks that we look forward to going to. And we've had a lot of success in the past there. I think we have uh, three or four billet ice cream scoops and we're looking forward to, uh, to taking our turn at running for it for, for another one. Like it. Awesome. awesome. Well, Erica, we always enjoy talking to you. Look forward to seeing you this weekend there at the Summit NHRA Nationals. Have yourself a good rest of your evening. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you there. Mr. Williams, just a few more moments. We'll shut the show down. Thank you to each and every one of you out there watching two stellar guests in Bill Bader Jr. and Erica Enders here on the Competition Plus Power Out. And hey, just wanted to give a shout out. Elon Warner helps us set these guests up so many times. He's the one putting them together. Thank you, Elon. We appreciate it. Doing great work for us. And Bobby Bennett, thank you for the platform, the world's largest online drag racing magazine and the place where you can certainly believe what you read on the internet. What a great show, Lee. Like you mentioned, Bill Bader, you know, like I said, top three names as far as track owners and track promoters in drag racing, the Baders, the Bandamirs, and the Smiths. And we got the five-time champ, five-time world pro stock champion, Miss Erica Enders. And so I really wanted to ask her because I grew up in the generation. So that Friday night when Ride on Track premiered, I was sitting at home in front of the TV when that, when that movie premiered. I, that's how that's how young I was. I used to be a, a Disney Channel kid. I want to know. Can tell. I want. <laughs> hey, Frosty, I was going to say, I was trying to bait you into saying a black joke when I asked you what they say about me. I oh, I know. I, I know. I know. I, I, I know. know. I'll just text you one, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. Who I believe his name was Jordy Notes and who that driver was based off of in the movie. I don't know if you've seen, have you seen Ride on Track? I have. Now it has been a, I remember when it came out and I was in Junior Dragster. So mm -hmm. I was certainly like, oh, I got to watch this film. Yeah. And wow, I, I need to watch it again. It has been a it's long a really good movie. time. It has it's a really been good movie. a long time since I've watched it. And just what an interesting connection that the, the Ender Gals are connected to stardom of our day and time with uh, Brie Larson, I think her name is, yeah, that you know, played in Avengers and uh, one of my favorite, uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. So, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a small world after all. <laughs> and how cool is it, too? You know, you talk about gum out Pennzoil, obviously the whole Texas connection with Eddie Hill, mm -hmm. obviously being uh, – Sponsored by Pennzoil. So, um, yeah, just what an all-around just great show. Like you said, you know, getting to talk, you know, Scott Coletta, Eddie Hill with, with Bader, and just all around the world nationals, U.S. nationals, uh, talking with the five-time champion, getting into her psyche. Just, just what an awesome show. Yeah, you know, the Bader conversation went into some places I did not expect it to go, which yeah. is refreshing. That is yeah. good. That's what we honestly want, I think, as viewers and as interviewers. We want it to go places that we uh, didn't expect. And uh, the what he had to say for Eddie Heal, what he had to say on his dad, what he had to say for the world nationals, uh, all of it was uh, fascinating and insightful. And uh, Bader will tell you like it is for yeah. sure. And, and like I said, we talked about this last week, and it probably will never happen. But we got top sportsman, we got top dragster, we got pro mod, we got Norwalk on the schedule. If we're not going to put Norwalk, Norwalk should be Fourth of July weekend. I know we're what a week before Fourth of July or two weeks before Fourth of July. I know so it's around the same area, but if, if it's not Fourth of July weekend, it's in the it's in the Midwest. Put it two weeks before the U.S. Nationals. Call the World Nationals again. I, I don't know. I would like that. I mean, why not? Why not? No, no, dude, dude, <laughs> dude. The NHRA peeps had have a hard enough time even mentioning. Look, they don't even play up, and, and I and I know this because I try to play it up on interviews and because I work for the dude. But like, 
Doug Foley and Clay Milliken cannot get away from each other. <laughs> and those are old IHRA rivals that beat up each other, you know, in IHRA. They never mention anything. Mm -hmm. They never mention anything. Well, you know, per that, like that, that other sanctioning body. Like, it has been without Nitro for years. It is okay. <laughs> Say something. The I side, like Ella Reinhardt says, call it the I side. What about the A side? You're right. HRA, ADRA, you're right. Yeah. What about the A side? Or, or what about the, the one off events? Like, I believe it was the Popular Mechanics Nationals. And you had all these great events that were one offs and had big names coming to them. Yeah. Look. look. You got the, UD, the UDRA, a lot, of, a lot of old sanctioning bodies out there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and I get it. I get it. You know, some will say like the real sanctioning body in HRA, but at one time I would argue IHRA was just as strong. And remember, IHRA was instrumental in bringing Winston into the sport. Hey, B Bobby Bennett. You know, I'm a, I'm full team in HRA, so if everybody know that. You know, full team in HRA. But Bobby Bennett has mentioned to me a bunch of times of how NHRA has adopted a lot of stuff from IHRA that's oh, instituted yeah. in today's NHRA. So, oh yeah. yes, oh He's yes. Let me know a lot well, of times. Yes, I I as a teenager went to several IHRA national events at what was at the time called Red River Raceway in Gillum, Louisiana, and it was a spectacular show, and mm -hmm. it was a good show, and you know, at the time, you, at the time I was watching or going to an IHRA national event, they didn't have Nitro Funny Car. It was just Alcohol Funny Car, but with like the legendary Mark Thomas. Yeah. And these beautiful funny cars and the paint and and, and they were setting just as high of a numbers, if not higher, than what they were doing over in the NHRA in that class. And yeah, certainly Top Fuel wasn't quite as competitive. And it was another level in HRA, but there was still some stellar racing and some great characters. Then you had Pro Mod on top. And then I've always loved them. And they, yes, certainly were an IHRA deal, but they have mountain motors. <laughs> I, mean, I remember the first time I saw an actual mountain motor pro stock, and I'm just like, dang, look at that motor. I'm ashamed to say the first time I've ever witnessed mountain motor pro stock was last year's U.S. Nationals. In person, in person. Well, first time I've ever, first you time know, I've ever it. You, you think you're some spoiled SoCal boy because of all the nitro and nostalgia you've got, but y'all living in the past when the rest of the country's moved on and gave, <laughs> gave a lot more, much cooler stuff into the world of drag racing and has diversified it. So you take that for however you may will. West Coast is the best coast, man. Look at you drinking water here on a live on air. I like it. I like it. Talking a lot. <laughs> So you're going to Norwalk, right? So I'm sure you're looking forward to that. I mean, you know, all the I'll ice cream there. you can eat. And, you know. <clears throat> it will not be all the ice cream I can eat. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You're going to see your favorite top alcohol dragster driver, though, I know. So. I will be covering top alcohol dragster and top alcohol funny car intensely okay. because the storylines, I think, again, are huge. Look, there, there's going to be 23 top alcohol dragsters going for 16 spots. Oh, I like it. We're talking about, yes, Julie Natus will be there, national points leader. Tony Stewart is entered. Matt Cummings, which, far as I can recall, Matt, this may be his first national event he enters this year in a McPhillips ride, but he has won nearly every regional that he has shown up to in that McPhillips ride. So definitely major player there. Sean Cowie is going to be at the event also. Ooh, Cowie's so, coming. Uh, yes, if I looked at the sheet right, yes, he's going to be there. So we're already going to start seeing some West Coast players start dipping into the points because it has mainly, as of now, been a East Coast type of scenario where people on the East Coast have been racking up the points, such as Julian Natus, such as a Tony Stewart, such as a Jackie Frick, and Jackie Frick will also be there as well. And now we're going to get into literally the Western swing, and you're going to see – uh the you're going to see those defending even the defending champion out of the west coast you're going to see the cowies the severances and so on start swinging the pendulum back and the points race tighten up it gets fascinating in alcohol this time of the year man how many funny cars are showing up now not a full field i was expecting it to be a full field and if you look at the car count 14 but there are some notable people missing for example dj cox well he hurt 
some things and regionally in Norwalk itself, and I believe even the regional before that. So he, he's had some parts of attrition, and I'm sure they want to get everything right. Uh, I definitely want to see him. He's on the entry list for Funny Car Chaos in Maryland. It's going to be great oh, really? to see him make a yeah. Funny Car Chaos debut at Maryland International Raceway. Looking forward to that. So, DJ, look, if you got to, just save some parts of that. Please come out <laughs> in August, okay, man? Definitely want to have you there. But – uh, they are not going to be there, and I'm kind of surprised Brian Howe is not on the entry list. I was expecting Brian to be there. You know, they performed well, and um, when I say well, they won the regional up there in Indianapolis at the Cletus and Cars event. I was expecting to see him at Norwalk. So, granted, though <clears throat> there's only 14 cars, this and not a full field, this is going to be – one of the biggest, if not the biggest to date, funny car field that the NHRA has seen this year at a national event. So it is a big race because you have like the top five in points showing up. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a battle between Sean Bellamere, uh, Matt Gill, Bob McCosh, and the big players there it's it's going to be a dog fight keep your eye on top alcohol plenty car mm -hmm. i like i like it you know like you said not a full field but 14 cars i, I can respect that right there and just going back on dragster <clears throat> 23 cars showing up i love you know i love a good bumpy and so q3 is gonna be very dramatic on saturday afternoon i cannot Ooh, wait for that q3 is gonna man, be amazing it, yes and it's one of those situations where it 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 also is interesting who is not there. So Jasmine Salinas is not on the entry list, and yet she was at the regional. Uh, Mike Coughlin is not on the entry list, yet he was at the regional. Both cars went out round one, uh, you know, oddly enough. They're not at the, the Norwalk National event now. And, you know, those are people in point standings. I think also keep your eye on Hunter Green. He's going to be in the other Randy Meyer racing car. Well, that other Randy Meyer racing car, the test car at the regional, if you look back at my recaps from the regional, the Calvacate of Stars, it was one of the best performing cars out there. Mm -hmm. And they've got it on track along with Julie's car. So, yeah, keep your eye out on Hunter as well. So what I'm saying is you got some players coming that – Though Hunter isn't necessarily pursuing, I would think, a national championship, he's definitely pursuing a Wally and can definitely shake up the point situation for top alcohol dragster. Nah, I definitely do agree with that. So, you know, looking forward to this weekend and just full weekend of racing. Top field, funny car, pro stock, pro stock motorcycle, alcohol dragster, alcohol funny car, factory <clears throat> stock showdown, and also factory X making an appearance this weekend as well, correct? Well, and we actually have seen footage of a Factory X car going down the track and not crashing, which <laughs> has been been great. And uh, look, shout out to Jeff Turk. Uh, I don't know if it was related to his accident or not, but uh, one, Jeff, uh, hope you keep getting better and mending. But he had like a brain bleed issue oh, really? and had to visit the hospital. And from what I understand, he is doing better. I don't know if that was complications from the, the wreck he had in the Factory X car as they were shaking it down and trying to get things right with it but uh we need to have a good we need to have him back on the show great character great ambassador for that class and uh, get some insight from him but aaron stanfield was shaking uh down a factory x car there at the texas motorplex that beautiful machine no it, it's aaron no hang hang on anyway he's connected with the stanfields <clears throat> shaking down the car and beautiful car because it's like a butch lil looking tribute thing and it, it, it it's 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 on fire for sure and uh it's going to be good to see something mm -hmm. hopefully at norwalk because yeah uh we've been talking about it and expected it at z max nothing expected it at bristol nothing so it's going to be good to finally get what i think could be the future of door slammer racing in the nhra oh possibly. really it, okay. could okay. it could be. It could like be. It could be. It could be. And uh, Corey Edward Ford mentions that the hat does look good. Well, yes, you can get all your funny car chaos gear. Just uh, search on the web. You can get a good-looking hat just like this. You just can't find the good-looking man wearing it. 
<laughs> I like it. I think I think we should end the show there. I, look at, I think we should the, too. I think we should. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, look, thank you for watching. This has been the Competition Plus Power Hour. I'm Lee Craft, aka the Monday Morning Racer. Over there is Darren Williams Jr., the assistant editor for Competition Plus. This has been episode 133. Thank you to Bill Bader Jr. and Erica Enders for their time. Thank you for your time. Join us next week, right here on Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll talk drag racing. Darren. Close it out. What episode? What number episode is this again? 133. 133. 133. Thank you guys all for tuning in to episode 133 of the Competition Plus Power Hour here at Tuesday nights with myself and my man, Lee Craft, the Monday Morning Racer. If you guys would like, like we talked about at the beginning of the show, if you guys would like to hear from your winners from the Wally Parks NHRA Nostalgia Nationals, Tyler Hilton in the Great Expectations 3, Front Engine Top Field Dragster, and Bobby Cacho, driver of the Bardall. Bucky Austin Owen, Nitro Funny Car. They'll be live tomorrow night here on Competition Plus YouTube and Facebook for Kings of the Sport episode number 14. So tune in tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. You can hear from our your winners, your Nitro winners from the Wally Parks, NHRA, Nostalgia Nationals, Tyler Hilton, and Bobby Cottrell. So come out, hang out, and leave a comment to join the show. See you guys all next Tuesday. Good night, everybody. But there's more. What's up? So speaking of sanctioning bodies, Thursday night on Between the Slicks, which you can watch on the Competition Plus Facebook page, but I'd love to have you on the Monday Morning Racer YouTube page. We are going to have IHRA representation. <clears throat> I mean, you going to tell us what it is or no? Oh, it's going to be Larry himself. Ooh. Along okay. with Mel Roth. Okay. Looking forward to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking forward to that. Are you in the hotel room? Yes, I'm in a hotel room. Okay. When am I when am I not in a hotel room? That is true. I'm in an undisclosed location as well. <clears throat> I see no Bernstein poster, no John Force diecast. I'm you, in studio. You are, I'm studio. You're in the Darren zone. I'm in, I'm in studio D. I'm in the Twilight Zone. I wonder if anybody's gotten hypnotized from this little thing right here. Probably. Yeah. There's someone over there at the power hour. All right, we're stopping. We're done. We're done. Thank Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. If you want to take your vehicle's performance to new heights, you got to give it P. Like our original equipment technology, antifreeze and coolant, our formulas match the vehicle manufacturer's technology requirements so that we have the perfect match for every vehicle. That's one reason why Peak is among the fastest growing brands of coolant in America. We work harder to earn the trust of people like you every day.